Good morning, everybody. My name is Nick Turner. I am one member of the WLAN Pi project team. And uh, I'd like to give you a quick update on what we've been up to since WLPC in Prague. <clears throat> quick agenda, we're going to talk about hardware, then we're going to talk about the new bit of hardware, software, and then the mobile app. You've seen this slide before. Same faces, the usual suspects, except we have a new face on the slide, and that is Dylan Toner, who has joined the, the project team recently. I'm going to invite him onto the stage towards the end of this slot to talk about his contribution to the project. <clears throat> Honorable mentions. Keek, uh, the more recent guys here are Ian Stout and Michael Ketchell, who have been contribu making contributions to the, to the project. Uh, what's involved in making contributions to the project? Basically, just turn up each week and uh, talk, talk about what, what we've been up to with the WLAN Pi, uh, where we would like it to go, and really doing something that you would like to do with the WLAN Pi. So if you have a feature request, and you're like, yeah, it'd be great if the WLAN Pi could do X, then if you can harness that energy and turn it into the feature that you want, then become part of the team. Just you know, reach out, join our weekly calls if, um, if you want to get involved in the development side of the WLAN Pi. Hardware, quick recap. <clears throat> there are two current models of WLAN Pi and a new one on the horizon. WLAN Pi R4, literally built on top of the Raspberry Pi 4. You take this housing apart, it's a Raspberry Pi 4 inside there. Stick a USB Wi-Fi dongle in this, you have a WLAN Pi. The M4. This is the outgoing model. Uh, this unit uses a compute module 4 placed on top of a carrier board. This unit has a Wi-Fi module built in. The M4 came with a Wi-Fi 6E module inside it. And it was capable of Wi-Fi 7, but you needed a physical key adapter to change from the A key to E key. <clears throat> the current model on this one is the M4 Plus. What's different about this versus the M4? It takes a Wi-Fi 7 module without a key adapter. It has uh, upstream power protection, so if you have PoE plugged in and you plug your computer in, you don't get any power going into the computer. And this device is now capable of OTG, with the caveat that you lose the access to your USB-A ports when you're in, a, in OTG mode. Introducing the new hardware platform, which is the WLAN Pi Go. This unit, we have worked in collaboration with Osium. And this device, same principle. It's a compute module. It houses an M.2 slot. We have a Wi-Fi 7 BE200 module inside it. This device can be plugged in via USB-C to your, to your laptop or to a phone or mobile device. And we've got that ring of magnets in the back of this device, so it will snap to the back of some smartphones. <clears throat> That's what it looks like on the inside. There's not a great deal going on in there. It's actually pretty small. Uh, we're limited by the size of the compute module. Uh, it'll attach to the back of your phone. Uh, I, I like to view this as we were unable to do what we wanted to do with the off-the-shelf hardware from Apple, and so we strapped an entire another computer to the back of it. Uh, and this will also support the Spectrum Analyzer from Osium. These units are not available for sale yet, but if you would like to find out when they are available, please join our mailing list. This QR code will take us to the website, uh, wlampi.com. Scroll to the bottom, put in your details. This is probably one of the safest mailing lists you can join. We've sent out one mailer so far. <laughs> you won't get spammed. It's our intention this year to maybe send out another mailer. <laughs> Big goals. <laughs> Safety, uh, on the WLAN Pi project front, we have taken things a step further. Um, we have now taken the WLAN Pi M4 Plus and the WLAN Pi Go into the lab, 
uh, performed electrostatic discharge testing on them. That involved taking a big gun, which zapped the poor little WLAN Pi uh, on a test bed. I felt pretty bad for it. Uh, they both passed, so they are both now certified as uh, electrically safe. Um, for spurious emissions, uh, the M4 Plus went through the spurious emissions testing, uh, and the, unit that, the units that have gone out, they're all, they're all good. No changes were required. Uh, and we're happy to say that the, the WLAN Pis are safe for use in your home labs. So that's, that's the degree to which they have passed their testing. Uh, WLAN Pi OS, uh, 3.3 launched yesterday. This, you, this, this release, uh, you should reflash your SD card uh, at the moment, would be our recommendation if you're hoping to get onto that one. Uh, but in the coming weeks, the upgrade path would be uh, possible without reflashing. Uh, we've upgraded the Linux kernel. We've got a new WPA supplicant. And uh, the API is now open by default, but with authentication. Whereas before, we closed the port, and you had to open it manually. Now yeah, it's going to be open by default, but it is protected with an authentication mechanism. OK, and now I'd like to invite Dylan up onto the stage just to talk about uh, what we're able to do now with the API. Hello, I'm, I'm Dylan, and I joined the project around a year ago, but recently have taken on the um, job of making the app. So we decided that a cross-platform framework would be the best idea, because then obviously we only have to write it once for both um, iOS and Android. However, because of the, the, the network stuff that goes on behind the scenes, we had to write that in both Kotlin and Swift independently to be able to communicate with the Pi. It's pretty simple to use. You, it automatically scans for the Pies. All you have to do is press connect, enter your login details, and it will save your token for the API, so you only have to do that once. And you can operate the Pi, see the statistics. Um, but there is more features to come. It also works with the Go. However, there are certain feature, features of the app that do not work because of the hardware limitations of the Go. For example, Grafana and Bluetooth. Thank, Thank you very, you very much. much. <laughs> so the app is now in the Google Play Store and Apple App Store. Uh, but you will need to have the latest image running on your WLAN Pi for that to work. Uh, please hit, check, check out the website. Uh, sign up to the mailing list. We won't spam you, I promise. Uh, if you'd like to contribute uh, if you'd like to contribute features and time to the project, reach out, let us know. If you'd like to contribute your money to the WLAN Pi project, um, put making purchases uh, helps uh, the development fund uh, that we have going on. Uh, but also, we have a Ko-Fi link. So if you wanted to buy the development team a coffee, please do so. Uh, quick note on the material. Uh, we, have, we use Gitbook uh, for the deep dive lab guides, uh, but we also then take that material a few months, typically after WLPC, and bring them out as public-facing cookbooks. So the lab guides that you can access not during a, not during a WLPC conference. Thank you very much for your time. <laughs>